going to explore how to graph f of x equals negative uh, square root of x plus 1. Now, anytime you're not sure of how to graph something, a good strategy is to create a table and see where some of the values land. So we'll do that, and then we'll try to draw some broader principles. So first, we'll notice that x can't be any old thing here because what's under the radical has to be greater than 0 in order to graph on the real uh, number line. So that means that x itself has to be bigger than uh, negative 1. Or it can be negative 1 um, or anything greater. If it's less than negative 1, say it's negative 2, negative 2 plus 1 would give negative 1, and I cannot take a real uh, root of that. So I'm going to start with negative 1 and choose a few values which are a little bigger than that to help give me the idea. So let's say x were negative 1. If I plug negative 1 here, I get 0. Square root of 0 is 0, and the negative is not going to affect it. So when, f of, when x is negative 1, f of x is 0. Now if I put in 0 itself, put in 0 here, I get 1. The square root of 1 is 1, but because of this sign, I have to make it negative 1. If I put in 1, if I put 1 in for x, that gives me 2. So I'd have the square root of 2, and it's going to be negative square root of 2. Continuing in this fashion, when I put in 2, I get negative square root of 3, and when I put in 3, I get negative 2. Notice that this turns out to a whole number because 3 plus 1 is 4, and 4 is a perfect square, has a whole number square root. So the ones that come out to whole numbers are going to be easier to graph. Let's start there. To graph these few points, first I have negative 1, 0. Then I have 0, negative 1. And finally, I have 3, negative 2. I could fill in these as well, but it's difficult to be as precise. So negative uh, square root of 2 is similar to negative 1.4, which kind of fits in with the graph. Um, but it's harder to graph the ones which aren't real numbers, or aren't whole numbers, I should say. Now, the graph overall is going to look something like this. Now, any graph of a square root is going to be some kind of transformation of what we call the parent square root function. So let's take a look at that for a second and compare it. So here's a representation of what we call the parent square root function. f of x is simply square root of x. It's basically the most simple type of square root function that you could have. Now, ours has some similarities to it and it has some differences. And we can explore where those come from. You'll notice that this has the plus 1, and we can see that that had the effect of essentially shifting everything back. So imagine you take this and you shift it all back. It would become the mirror image of the function that we drew. Then the other thing that happens is related to this negative out here. You'll notice when I made all these calculations, at the last second I had to make them negative because there was a negative out here, which has the effect of flipping it over the x-axis. So the plus 1 inside had the effect of sliding it back. The negative flipped it over the axis. And that's another way to arrive at the function. By simply looking at what transformation is done and having the idea of what a parent function looks like, we can get a better idea of how to graph individual functions as they arise. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you.